This is the proverbial Larry and Sergey in the Silicon Valley garage shop. And you've all heard about companies starting in the garage. What you need to know about these guys is they didn't start the company in a garage. They graduated to a garage. <laughs> they were working in their dorm room, but what happens when you're running search across many computers, it gets really hot in there and they couldn't sleep at night anymore. And so they needed to find a garage. This is the original rack of Google servers. Uh, you'll notice none of them look like each other. The one down on the lower right-hand corner there was built with Legos. Uh, <laughs> they turn out to be a good heat insulator. Uh, Larry and Sergey didn't have any money at all. They both came from very modest backgrounds, and so the way they'd get their hands on computers is that they would go hang around the loading dock at Stanford and wait for computers to be delivered to unsuspecting you know, sociology and humanities professors who didn't know any better. And they'd walk up very convincingly and say, you know, you could start using that computer today, or I could uh, configure that thing for you and you know, get it up to speed and really fine tune it, et cetera. And the professor's like, oh, really? You do that for free? Oh, sure. And so they'd give them these, these computers, and they'd use them for two, three months until the professors caught on, and then they'd give those computers back and go wait by the loading dock again. And so <laughs> it was a very capital efficient way of, of getting going. <laughs> this is the original Google website design. Uh, oh, man, Google has won award after award mm -hmm. for the simplicity and beauty of this design and how wonderful it is. And wow, it's, it's an island, it's an oasis on the internet when you're surfing and you're assaulted by blinky things everywhere and you get here. And yet, Larry and Sergey would tell you, though they were computer scientists, they didn't really know HTML. And so this is the only page they were capable of actually coding. <laughs> yeah, had they actually had any more skills, they would have messed this up. <laughs> It's amazing is we always got asked, like, so are you trying to build a sweatshop there and just keep people there as long as possible? Is that the idea? And two answers. Number one is um, no, because if that were the case, we would have a place to sleep at Google. And there's no place to sleep. That's the one thing. We were pretty sure that these engineers, as cheap as they were, would, would opt out of renting apartments if we gave them a place to sleep at Google. <laughs> and we, we really wanted them to have lives. And so you can't sleep at Google. Uh, but the second is, I don't know about you, but for me, in any given day, I am really only in the zone of productivity, really getting stuff done or on my game, maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> Admit it to yourselves. <laughs> what do you do with the rest of your day? Oh, it's travel here and there. It's yapping. It's reading newspapers. It's eating. It's being interrupted. It's tracking down something and running errands and doing all this other garbage. And when you finally sit down and get productive, you know, and maybe even log into your inbox. And it's, an inbox, as I've said, is a, is a to-do list to which anyone else can add items. It's like, so you sit on your inbox, and you're like, oh, i got to be reactive to all this other crap, blah, blah, blah. But when you finally sit down and start getting task-oriented, maybe you get an hour, hour and a half out of the day. I mean, if you're doing that well, you're kicking ass. For us, we believed anything we could do to optimize the likelihood that that happened while you were at Google around your colleagues. <laughs> around your computer, we win. <laughs> and the key thing is that Eric, the CEO, Larry and Sergey, the two co-founders, take the stage every single week, and they do the same three things. One, they go over everything the, the company accomplished that week, everything that got launched, every big deal that was signed, everything that was broken and got fixed, any new big decisions that have been made. They review it all. In fact, the week after every board meeting, Eric reviews the entire board slides from the board meeting with the entire company. Literally, like slide by slide. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but everyone at Google is considered a financial insider, and so nobody at Google can trade stocks except in very small windows. And that encourages the direct sharing of information. So Eric gets up in front of the company and tells everyone the financials of the, and, and how things are going. Uh, in the same presentation, the same slides he just gave to the board of directors of the company a few days earlier. Then. Uh, Eric, Larry, and Sergey introduce all of the new employees who joined the company that week. So back when I joined in 2003, that meant I was like interviewed on stage for a little while. And, yeah, and now it's 200 people joining a week. And so um, you, uh, you, you know, there's a slide that says kind of like uh, what your hobbies are, where you worked last, what you're going to be working on kind of stuff. And to make uh, introductions easier, new Googlers uh, wear a, uh, a beanie hat with a propeller. Very colorful one. And, it, and a new Googler is actually called a Noogler. And so 
as a noogler, you wear this hat and people can pick you out and come talk to you and that kind of stuff. But um, the third thing they do here is they take every single question from the audience with no filters, no PR, no marketing, no lawyers or finance judging which questions are worthy and which aren't. Just microphones in the audience, microphones in all the, all the international offices, um, and even a way to submit questions online and using like a dig slash reddit type formula to vote them up and down. Questions get submitted and they take them all. And some of them are very frivolous like, hey, um, what happened to the pet insurance that we used to have? Or, you know, when are we going to get more pools installed? These ones are always full. And to people will stand up and ask, uh, Larry, Sergey, I think it's crap that we launched product XYZ. I think we did that to make money. I think it really takes advantage of our users and takes them for granted. And I think it subverts the way the internet works. And um, why did we launch that? And those guys, despite the fact that they're standing in front of thousands of people, will grab the microphone and be like, you know what, I totally agree with you. I think it was crap that we launched that too. Sergey, why did we launch that? <laughs> And then Sergey will come up and grab the microphone, and then that debate happens on stage, live, in front of the company. And if there was a VP involved or something like that, they're like, Urs, come up here. What were we thinking? Like, what's the process there? And people are accountable. And everyone's in that room having the debate in front of the entire employee base. Nothing's considered privileged or, or above the folks who are there in the company. And what's amazing about it is in, in the four and a half years I worked there, only twice did I see something from that room leak to the press. There was such a fascinating sense of trust when you, when you treat people like, tr like people, more than factor inputs of production, when you actually share all the information you have with them. I've seen less sharing in a company. The company I worked in before Google had 55 people in it when I left. And we shared less. We had a cabal of, of executives, and we didn't talk to the plebes about certain decisions we were making. And yet what was amazing about Google is that everyone in that room, irrespective of where they fell on the org chart, just felt a sense of, of loyalty and ownership. Questions like what to do about China weren't hammered out in private. They were hammered out in that room over weeks in front of all the employees so that no matter how you feel about the ultimate decision, everyone in that company felt like they were a stakeholder in that decision and like they'd had a chance to be heard. It was pretty amazing. So for us, we learned be open. Be open not just for the people outside of the company who are very important. Obviously, your customers need to know what you're up to. There's no sense pretending you're doing better than you are, or feigning interest, or feigning success to them. But, but at the same time, be open with employees. And don't take them for granted. You know, Google didn't actually pay more than other companies in the Valley. It still doesn't. It just treats people like people. And not just because it gives them free food and stuff. It treats them in a way that it really feeds, uh, feeds intellect, and it feeds the, the sense of fulfillment and the sense of purpose in individuals, and really gives them the opportunity to have impact and feel like they're part of a, of a grander, impactful solution. I think that's important. I just asked if I could say, I think it's rare that you have an opportunity to find somebody who's understated and absolutely fascinating. And uh, I was taking notes, and uh, I just think it's a special gift. Uh, maybe we could have a nice round of applause for Chris. Oh, thanks. <laughs>